Okay, this is a week five for Web 290. Cookies and formatting strings. The Practice Labs goes has a couple PDFs on creating a PHP site using div tags and CSS template. These two PDF files, the first one goes over how to display forms, redisplaying form information, and the second one is cookies. You'll go to this website here, make a template, CSS template. There's an example here that you can download and manipulate. On the website, I'll go ahead and click on that. The easiest way to use it for the lab here is just go down to the bottom here and generate it. Um, but what you're doing here basically is telling this where, where to create the div files, the div sections on a CSS file, the div sections. So it's going to have a top section, left and right columns, main section, and general section, which would be the body section. Here's the dimensions of the top section. Height 50, zero border, lavender color, the template, the image banner, and how wide you want it to be. The left and right column, 100 pixels left, 120 pixels right, that's from the edge of the browser, 120 pixels right, 100 pixels left. So from the left side of the browser, 100 pixels to the right of that. On the right side of the browser, 120 pixels to the left of the right side of the browser. Left color lavender, right color plum, zero border on both. Main section, white smoke, border, dark blue, border one, font size 12, font color purple, and Verdana is a font style. And this is mainly the body of the website it's gonna create. So go ahead and click generate page. This is what it should look like. There's a top, left and right. And there's a margins it asks for on the left and right. Body section. And so the CSS file is used for this. And you'll notice how the left and right and top are docked at the top or moving when I move the web page. And that's what CSS helps for on a website. Is it keeps things pushed over and in the proper context as the browsers are moved. On this page, you have two sections of code. One is a section for the CSS file, style.css. The next is a section for index.html. And so technically, you can take the style.css, copy that, paste it into a document, into a text notepad or something, save it as style.css. Same with index. You can copy and paste that in a notepad, save it as index.html. The line where it pulls the CSS file on the document um, we go into the header information of this document. You'll notice here it's after the title, it's doing a style sheet re relevant reference to the style.css, and that's where it's done. You need to make sure the style.css is in the same folder as the index.html and a couple more things I'll highlight and then uh, let you go at it. The div tags in the CSS file, you'll notice banner, left content, center content, just to name a few. Those are found in the actual CSS file. If we scroll down, there's a left content one. Absolute position gives pixels for top, left, top, width, background, border, center content. So basically, the div tags in the HTML, the div IDs, 
determine where things go in that div tag. So the banner starts there, ends here. Everything in between that, this basic HTML code, is going to be formatted by the CSS banner function. All right. So that's the practice one. And an example I have here that you can look at is right there. And the source file you can download and look as well and play with. So that's again just a practice one. I don't I'm not grading that one as always, but it's fun using CSS and learning about it. If you've used Dreamweaver, it has built-in CSS function, but that website's real nice to play with uh, and manipulate CSS output. For the homework, you're reading Chapter 2. There is a couple exercises in Chapter 2, specifically 4 and 5, that you'll complete on page 83. You can use a PDF file. Um, that I put in the lessons area and course documents. Use a PDF file here if you want to. You'll upload it uh, to your course web page as always and in submission um, Full name and the title, homework URL for the exercise page uh, in, the, in the message, and then compress and attach week 5 folder and submit it. Here's the example. You enter a string of text. Format. Cookie's not alive, they're brought over my string of text. I'll change the format here, make a different color, a different font style. This time I'm going to do save your preference and do format and refresh the page. Now this says the cookie is alive. Refresh until cookie life ends in 60 seconds. So you can keep refreshing this. Finally, this cookie will kill itself and Chuck will go away after 60 seconds basically because the cookie will kill it, will be gone. And what basically is in the cookie is the variable name, the font style, font color, font size. Alright, let's look at the code on that real quick. You're using basically cookies, which all websites use today, uh, to cat to get data uh, during the user session. It's a lot of times used just to help the user uh, during that session, not to have to remember, not to you know, clicking preferences or determining also what websites they've been to. Um, so when they come back next time. It'll always have already have the preferences set for that user. So the first page is just a base of the HTML page. It's got a post action to the format.php that we'll look at in a second. Um, and again, it's got in there text box, a drop down, drop down, drop down, button, checkbox. All of these that I just mentioned are going to have variables attached to them in the original index page. The first one is going to come over here and it's going to uh, ask the user to enter in a text. The ID for that is uh, format text. The next is size is the name of the next one. First one, I'm sorry, is not format text, it's text input is the variable name that we're going to bring over. Then size, color, and pref for preference. 
It's going to all be submitted to the post format.php page. Let's go there. It's going to begin bringing in using that post and those variable names, text input, font, size, color. It's going to put it into a session variable. So it's declaring font size and color after it brings in text input into the session variable text input. Then session variables for font size and color are also going to be brought over. If pref, post pref, meaning the checkbox is yes, then it's going to set cookies. Set cookies is the name of the cookie on the first argument. The value of the cookie, in this case, is going to be the font style, and then the length of time the cookie lives. In this case, it's present time plus 60 seconds. Doing a set cookie only for font size and color. Then it's going to immediately come back and if uh, and to put cookies into font size and color. Now if this is not true then these three will be empty. If font is empty on the next line it's going to take the session variables for font size and color and plug them into the local variables font size and color and it's going to echo out cookies not alive else meaning font does have content meaning there was a cookie created it's going to echo out cookie is alive then it's going to echo out to the screen font size and color Let's go back to the page I had sitting there and let's go type in manually format.php and now it says cookies not alive. Okay? Because it's been sitting there longer than 60 seconds. If cookie was alive, the, everything would still be there. Um, it would say at the top of it. A cookie is alive and Chuck would be up there at the top. Then after it does the echo of font size and color, it's then going to echo out the, the name that you put in the name text box, which is on the first form here. And that's it. So basically it shows you in this assignment the power of cookies, how you can use them for a set time, cookies can be set um, indefinitely. They can be set for days, months, hours. And the power of it for websites is to generally uh, use for user benefit. So basically, when they go to a certain page or pages on a website and they set, for instance, um, a lot of websites will let you do different preferences like color, font, size. Font size is a main one. They can change the font size of a page. It'll remember that in a cookie. That way when they come back later to that website, it, it uses the cookie on that website to bring in whatever data. Now granted that cookie is going to have to be a unique name for that company, for that website. Um, generally, cookies have high IP addresses along with um, the variable name, just to be unique. It could also be computer name, IP address, and variable name combination. But cookies are pretty powerful. There's definitely more study you can do on cookies and the manipulation of cookies and the use of cookies. Um, cookies basically further from saving it locally for the user um, can actually gather data as well for websites because you can set a cookie log that basically keeps a log of data and maybe website activity while they're on that website. And then that cookie can be 
brought back to the web server database for collecting and aggregating data. Now, most websites will have a disclaimer or something on there telling you they are doing that. Most people don't know that when they go to a website that the, the everything that they're doing on that website is number one being tracked. It's being data is being collected. Now, as far as what data is collected, cookies are fairly hidden in what they do. And uh, now there are ways you can find them on your computer. Um, but for the most part, most users are not going to know how to do that. And in fact, I will, um, in one of the podcasts coming up, I'll do a, a further lab on uh, just a, a podcast on more on cookies and how they work. It's just a supplemental type thing I'll do because I think cookies can be pretty powerful from a web developer standpoint. So, all right, so that concludes week five. If you have any questions, email me as always or chat with me if I'm online. Uh, it is Wednesday, so I do have online chat office hours tonight. And so have a great week.